So, uh, like I said, this is the Pasco Ripple Tank. Uh, it's gone through some evolutions through the years. It's been around for some time. This is the most recent evolution. It's a little bit smaller, which is nice because it's compact, uh, but it has a lot of really neat features when it comes to demonstrating waves, wave patterns, wave interference, reflection, refraction, and I'll show you all that in just a second. But before I turn this on and get the waves going, uh, I just wanna go over a couple of the, the things, the features that you see here. Uh, this is an LED light source, right? And so this light source uh, is different than our old light source, which was a halogen bulb uh, that was mechanically strobed. This is uh, electrically, electronically strobed, uh, and it's done so through this ripple generator box right here. And this ripple generator box has two arms to hold the actuators that we can use to create ripples in this water. Now, I'm going to go to the tank here for a split second and then go back to the ripple generator. Uh, this tank that you see here, this square, has about eight millimeters of water in it. Uh, now, some people might think that this area underneath here has water in it, but it does not. In fact, uh, if I drop this, this is a viewing screen that we're going to use to help. You'll see here that there is nothing there. It's just a, a mirror right here. And so we've got a tank with about eight millimeters of water in it. And around the edge are foam barriers, angled foam barriers. And we've added a little bit of a surfactant that comes with it uh, to help reduce surface tension in those areas. And what that does is we're, we're going we're gonna to ripple the water. We're going to agitate the water using you know, different uh, pieces that I'll talk about in a second. And those waves will propagate across the tank. And what we don't want is them bouncing back all over the place, right? Because then we're going to get interference in our patterns that we're trying to demonstrate. And so those foam barriers help do that and they're angled in such a way that will help reduce that. Uh, and so underneath here, this is just a, a mirror and a viewing screen. This is just a diffusing screen, right? And we could take this off and uh, the waves that we see will actually be projected down onto the table surface underneath us if we want. But in this case, we're gonna use this in its sort of demo format where now we're gonna project those waves onto this diffusing screen here and you'll be able to see them in a second. Uh, the ripple generator, back to the ripple generator, it has a, uh, uh, like I said, these two arms here, the old actuators, and we can have them in phase or out of phase if we wanted to, right? And both are useful tools when demonstrating waves. Uh, we can control the frequency, uh, right? And they, the uh, actuator arms are at the same frequency. We can't change the frequency of the two different arms. The amplitude of the displacement, uh, these red knobs help us control the tilt here because we want whatever uh, actuator is touching the water to be flat, right? We want them to be evenly in the water, creating the same agitation. And then there's also a delta function here, and this knob allows us to uh, change the strobing frequency compared to the driving frequency, which will give the effect of waves moving either forward or backward, uh, you know, slower when the, when the delta is smaller, faster when the delta is larger. Uh, and we have the ability to have the strobe on, <clears throat> right, the light on at, at a steady state, or we can have it on at a strobe. So I'm going to turn this on right here. And so right now the light is strobing, right? You can probably see it in my hands here. Now we've got a lot of floodlights going on here that we're going to turn off in a second to help see this, right? But this actuator, this long, thin line actuator arm that's down in the water is creating these waves and you could probably kind of see them there, but you'll see them better in just a second when we turn the lights off. Uh, so along with this system, we also have a bunch of components that we can use to help do the demos that we're interested in. And so right now, on these uh, arms, the actuator is a long, straight piece of plastic, and it creates these plane waves. But we have the ability to change that to you know, something like a circular ac actuator or a larger, nah, a larger circular actuator. Thanks, JP. Sure, you're welcome. Or even a smaller circular actuator that we can use to do things like a point source, which I'll show you in just a second. And then there's also barriers in there. <clears throat> and so these are uh, barriers that we'll use to demonstrate reflection. 
right? And we'll also use them to demonstrate things like uh, refraction, or excuse me, uh, diffraction and interference. And so one of the most important things with this tank is you want to make sure it's level. So a level is ha handy to have with you. It doesn't come with the system, but you want to make sure that it is in fact level. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the frequency. When I turn this on, that actuator arm is vibrating at 20, uh, 20 times per second. I'm going to turn this up to 30. Now I can adjust lower, or excuse me, slower or faster, lower or higher frequency, but I'm going to 30 because the cameras use a 30 uh, frames per second. The frame rate is about 30 frames per second. Otherwise, you get this weird blackening across the screen, so we'll use 30. But some of the demonstrations that I'm going to do are better done at lower frequencies or higher frequencies, and I'll talk about that in a second. John, do you mind killing the lights? And I'm going to turn these big strobes off. And so you can see on this projection screen how the waves look. And I'm going to just make sure the front of that arm is nice and smooth. There's not a lot of odd surface tension there. That will give us the best plane waves. And I can turn the amplitude down just a little bit, or I can turn it up, right? But the higher the amplitude, the more distortion you get at the, uh, the wave generation site. But here's our plane wave, right? And you can see if I adjust the delta here, let me go this way. So now the strobe frequency and the driving frequency have a small delta between them, and it looks like the waves are traveling from left to right. Okay, but I'm going to turn that off because I think it looks better on the camera with the frame rate with the delta off. Okay, and so the first thing that we want to show is reflection. So we've got waves. These could be sound waves, right? These could be uh, light waves with a plane wave front, right? How does that interact when it reaches a surface, an angled flat surface like this? Right? And so you can see here, those plane waves come in, they interact with the surface, and they are reflected. There are lines now, horizontal lines instead of vertical lines. And that is the reflection of those plane waves as they interact with that surface. So I'm going to turn the delta on for just a split second. And you can see how the the incoming waves move left to right, and the reflected waves move top to bottom. Let me go back now. And so we can do things like reflection, demonstrate what happens to the waves. And you know, I should have described first, you'll see here there are light areas and dark areas in the plane waves. These represent areas of, for a sound wave, it would be something like a compression versus a refraction, right? The difference in amplitude, or excuse me, difference in, uh, the position of the wave, but the, the wavelength of the wave would be something from like crest to crest or trough to trough. Right? And we could, if we wanted to, use a ruler to measure that. So there's a flat surface reflection. Now we can do things like a curved surface reflection. And so you can see here those plane waves come in and they're reflected and they come back and they end up at this focal point right here. And you can see the focal point of this mirror, right? And so let me turn the amplitude up just a little bit, maybe get them a little bit deeper. See, and you can see I get a little bit of distortion here. Let me just move this. But you can see that focal point right there. Now, what I want to demonstrate is refraction. And so we've got these waves going through this medium, right? But if we introduce a new medium for these waves to travel through, right, which is represented by this yellow piece of plastic here, you can see that the wave speed changes as they come in here and cross the top of this plastic medium here. And what's really happening is the water has gone from uh, eight millimeters to about maybe one or two millimeters across the top. But this is effectively showing how the wave speed changes as it goes from one medium to another. And you can see here the waves come in relatively flat and then they kind of bend in the middle. They slow down. And so I'm going to take this out of here and replace this rhomboid thing 
with what looks like a Plano convex lens. And with this lens in place, you can see here that the waves get bent and there's a focal point out here. It's off the screen. You can't really see it. Let me turn this up a little bit. And you can see that they get bent and you can almost see the lines they form out here. And so this would be demonstrating how these plane waves bend through something like a lens. Turn that down again. And so that's refraction. We can also do things like diffraction. And so what happens to a plane wave front when it reaches a small slit, relatively small, you get these plane wave fronts regenerating at that slit area, right? Huygens principle. So let me turn the amplitude up just a little bit. So you can see those waves are plane, they're flat, they have a, a flat wave front. And when they reach that slit, they start to bend more so around the edges, right? And so if we make the slit smaller, the effect should be a little bit more dramatic. And you can see that they're much more curved. That wave front has gone from a flat wave front plane wave front to a curve wave front as it goes through that slit. Let me turn the amplitude up just a little bit more. We can probably see it better. Right, and so you've got this circular wave front, right, coming through. And we can increase this size of the slit. And you can see things like single slit diffraction. And so on the right side of these slits, or the, the slit right here, you can see areas of the wave canceling out where you have zero amplitude when it reaches the far right side and areas where it doesn't, right? So we're demonstrating now single slit diffraction. Turn it down just a little bit there. We see it a little bit better there. But, Wait, there's more. We can demonstrate a double slit experiment, an interference, diffraction and interference with this ripple tank. And so now we've got two slits and you can see the two, the plane wave front coming in and the two circular wave fronts coming out. And let me turn this up a little bit so we can see it better. And you can see the interference of the two to the right of that barrier. And let me, I'm gonna actually move these a little bit closer. And every time I touch the water, it creates disturbance, which needs to settle out a little bit. So I'm gonna let that settle out. And there you can see the two circular waves being emitted from those slits. And you can see the interference as those two circular wave fronts cross each other. And you can follow those areas to de determine where your areas on the far right side of the tank are experiencing constructive versus destructive interference. Right. And so this demonstration is one of those demonstrations that's usually done at a lower frequency. So I would have not do this at 30 hertz, but for the purpose of the camera we have at 30 hertz, but you would turn it down and you'd be able to see uh, a little bit more clearly what's going on. So yeah, that is, there is a qualifier for some of these demonstrations. And so there we've got double slit interference. And if you wanted to maybe demonstrate that, uh, the two source interference, rather than using the double slit example, you can use these point source actuators. Let me turn this down. So we're using a plane wave actuator right now, right? But if I wanted to, I could take this off and put on these point source actuators. And the point source actuators are just two little, basically round feet that touch the surface of the water. And so let me put one on here. I wanna make sure they're the same height. And then I'm gonna use this gimbal mount to get them down on touching the water. There we go. And so we've got two, let me move that out just a little bit there. 
we've got two point sources. And so right now they're, they're in phase. Let me turn them up a little bit so we can get the depth of contrast a little bit higher. And you can see clearly the areas of constructive interference versus destructive interference, where the light, the bright line crosses the dark line, right? We've got destructive interference. If you've got a bright line crossing a bright line, you've got constructive interference. Dark crossing a dark, you've also got constructive interference. And so this is a really neat way to demonstrate that this is, this is a real thing. And let me turn the delta on so you can see them being emitted and moving left to right. And you can see the point source actuators going from bright to dark. And if I switch the phase, now they go, now one is bright and one is dark. So we've introduced the 180 degree phase difference between them. And so this ripple tank can do some amazing, amazing demonstrations. Let me turn the delta off, put them back in phase. And so the last thing that I wanted to show with this is not only does this work well for wave propagation and wave interference, you can use this setup to demonstrate the Doppler effect as well, which is really cool. And a lot of people don't know that this tool can be used for that. If I take off one of the, these actuators, I have a single point source here, right? And so the frequency of wave that's being generated is constant. It's fixed. It's 30 hertz, right? And the wavelength all around that generation source is the same. But if I move this, if I slide this around on the table, you can see this odd shifting. It just doesn't feel right. It's almost like a sloshing of water in a tank. That's because the wavelength in front of and behind that point source is actually changing depending on which direction it's traveling, right? So if we move it, if I go, it'll be from top to bottom for you. If I go top to bottom, you'll see the wavelength below the point source is shrinking. The frequency isn't changing, and this can be difficult for students, right? The frequency does, the generated, the wave that's being generated is the same frequency, right? But the wavelength is changing as we move it. And that is the Doppler effect. Yeah. Well, did somebody want to get the lights for me? Whoa! There it is. Be careful what you ask. Yeah. So that's the Ripple Tank. It does uh, a million things, and uh, if when it comes to waves, if you can think of it, this system can probably do it in terms of application and demonstration. And I should point out, this was all demonstration, but this image that you were seeing here can be projected to the surface of the table. And there, the system comes with a ruler that you can use to actually make quantitative measurements, things like wavelength, frequency changes. You know what I really love about this, JJ, is it's kind of like the new generation in its development. When I was teaching physics, our ripple tanks were huge. They took gallons of water. Yeah. The, the machine was loud. Yeah. Um, it made a lot of sloshing. We're only looking at a tiny amount of water here. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're, we're looking at a device that um, settles out easily. I can't even hear this one. No, and, it and makes zero running. noise. So, We've really completely changed the way that we can show some very nice wave functionality without the big setup problems yeah. and all the water and the big messes. Um, I say that for Dan Burns, who told us today that once he set him up, it was so messy and there was so much water, but we're only looking at a little bit of water. Oh, yeah, so this, this, you're absolutely right, Dan. This beaker comes with the system. It doesn't even fill this beaker up with water. And drainage is easy. It comes with a drainage tube in the corner. You just open the valve and it drains. Love it. Excellent. Thank you, JJ. That was a great demonstration, a wonderful demonstration. The Ripple Tank and all the great things that you can do with waves and the Ripple Tank.